because uh, we have uh, another meeting to get to. So welcome to the October 6, 2022 uh, Committee on Finance meeting with Vice Chair Labarge. I am Chair Maori, and we are being uh, audio, audio and video recorded. Um, and yeah, I'd like to just say, let, well, let's, let's call the meeting to order and then I wanted to make a comment. Thank you, Laura. Sure, Councilor Maori. Here. Councilor Labarge. Here. Councilor Moulton. Here. And Councilor Nash. Here. Okay, so, so we have a quorum. Yes, I was just going to uh, offer apologies for a confusion around public comment that I uh, personally spread because um, this meeting is actually a continuation of our last finance meeting. And because of the time constraints, uh, because we have a council meeting at seven, and because we will be bringing this issue up at council, we felt it was best to, to not take public comment here. But I, um, so, I, so apologies to the public on that one. Uh, so let's, so we only have one, um, item on our agenda, the deliberation and recommendation on 22.167 in order to appropriate $500,000 in CPA funds for 10 Holy Street re rehabilitation project. I think we're all um, familiar with this one. And our, our task tonight before council is to have, have finance make a recommendation to full council for the vote later. Yeah, so I think uh, counselors, it's our time to kind of uh, decide what we want to do with our, our recommendation task. Yes, Councillor Nash. Thank you, um, Chair Mayori. And um, that, um, yeah, I'd like to take a shot at going first here because I, I this, um, this proposal has to do with a project in my ward and a property that my ward has been, uh, neighbors in the ward have been uh, working on for a long, long time. So um, so thanks for allowing me the floor. I, I'm going to be asking that we uh, send this to council with a positive recommendation. Um, I, I wanna start by thanking all of the friends of uh, St. John Cantius, who've worked hard on this project, um, uh, especially Elaine Gendu and Deb Henson uh, for uh, their organization. Um, I, I want to thank um, uh, the, the rest of the group for all of their hard work. Um, I want to thank the seven, now 1,700 folks who've signed the online petition in support of finding a way to preserve uh, St. John Cantius. I know there's some folks out there who also said that, you know, I signed the position, uh, petition, but it, it wasn't for this particular recommendation. And, and, and I get that. And, but we, whoever signed that, signed it with the idea of like, we want to see it preserved. And, and it was written with that intent. Um, I want to thank Bill Newman for his fine piece in the uh, Gazette over the weekend. Um, talking with uh, with Bill really helped me gel my ideas, which um, I'll be sharing tonight. Um, I want to thank Bill Krause. I want to thank Matt Welter, and um, and I want to thank um, O'Connell Development Group um, that um, for their ability to work together. Um, that um, we, um, and, and I also wanna thank the, there's, there's an anonymous donor out there who donated over $50,000 in consulting fees to, uh, for Matt and uh, Bill Krause's teams to work together that has resulted in the, pro the proposal that we're looking at tonight. Um, I wanna thank, go back over a decade here and thank uh, the planning department, and back to when Carolyn was working for Wayne, and um, when we re rezoned this this property with the with the idea of it becoming central business, so that different ideas could be um, entertained here, because we knew that this structure, specifically this structure, was at risk. Um, 
I want to uh, thank the planning board for their work in 2015, where they worked hard to actually approve a senior living um, project for that property. In St. John Cantius, the building would have become a restaurant. That was a, that was a terrific idea. The funding didn't happen. Um, I want to thank um, uh, Andrew Crystal for working with me uh, along with Matt to hold a community meeting where back in 2019, we met with uh, uh, neighbors and community members to talk about their plans for this property. And that's in that meeting, that's where I said, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be working with you guys to say, I want this building preserved. I'm all for all of these other things that are going on here, but we, if we can figure out a way to preserve this building, that is a goal. Um, I want to thank again, thank the planning board and the uh, ZBA for their work in 2020 as they approved Holly Manor. That's the project that's currently going on. And, um, uh, and, and for, I believe it's for 24 condominiums to be built there. Um, I want to thank Central Business Architecture for their multiple meetings back in 2021. And, um, and, and particularly, it was all focused on whether or not to demolish this building. And I, I want to make it clear that that demolition permit is still hanging at, at Central Business Architecture. And it could still move forward if we don't, um, depending on what we choose to do tonight. Um, more thank yous are in order for both the Historic Commission and especially for the Community Preservation Committee, whose thoughtful decisions have helped me to land on my vote tonight. I, um, uh, the, that, um, uh, that their agonized, quote, <laughs> um, decision, um, but unanimous, I, I, I think that kind of reflects a place where we're all at, that this is, we're, we're used to big win-wins where it's like you check all the boxes and, you know, that's not where we're, we're where we are tonight. But there is a win here. And I, I want to underline that. By the end of this evening, we will have engaged in over 20 public meetings, many of them public hearings. This does not include the many other uh, St. John Cantius discussions held by the War Three Association, the Friends of St. John Cantius, and the North Hampton, including groups like the Northampton Chamber. It also doesn't include the very successful rally that occurred last summer at 33 Holly Street. It also doesn't include the meetings between Bill Krauss and Matt Welter, and also doesn't uh, include the time put in by both Carolyn Mish and Sarah Lavalley to get us here tonight. Um, the time and energy put into this en energy to preserve this building is to be lauded and recognized that where we are tonight has been a long time coming. Um, and, um, and this has been the work of many respected bodies within our community. Um, I just wanna list some of the ideas that have been flown over and, and some were vetted, some not, but just these are ideas that have been out there. There's, there was, the previous owner was approached by many organizations um, to repurpose that building. Now we know a senior living um, uh, project was proposed for there. Uh, we also know that the Arts Trust approached um, uh, the, uh, the previous owner about putting the um, third, what is now 33 Holly there. And that would have preserved uh, this build, the building in question as a performance space. That didn't move forward. Other ideas that have been flown between the work of uh, Bill Krauss and just people in our community, um, there were, you know, uh, the idea of a farmer's market, a live work complex, uh, a brew pub that was done by uh, O'Connell, um, a complex for a human service organization. I'm keeping it very vague, vague to keep their identity. <laughs> um, there was also a, um, a, a daycare center that, or, or no, it was a preschool that was looking for a site. And, and, and I've pointed them towards the, the previous owner. Um, and I also pointed them towards O'Connell 
as I knew they were struggling to find a, a, a new purpose for that church. Um, that I, I, I want it clear that with throughout all of this, affordable housing was explored. For this particular building, affordable housing, it, there's not enough units to make it work. That's not just coming from O'Connell. That is coming from the folks on the St. John Cantius um, Friends Group. And it's also coming from Laura Baker at Valley CDC that it, it you need a bigger building. You need something like Sergeant House, which is over on Bridge Street, which um, which has 30 units of housing. Here we're this in this particular case for this building, we're talking about 10. Um, I want to. Um, uh, so why do why should we approve this? Well, I want to go macro first which is on this property between, you know, overall that used to be the church property, we are looking at 40 units of new housing in downtown at a place where there was no housing before. Yes, the clergy was housed there, but we're, I, I, I don't think we consider that, you know, we're getting 40 units of housing near downtown that weren't there before. Um, specifically here, we're getting 10 units of badly needed, efficient, walkable rental housing. Uh, that's a short walk to downtown. Um, it's half a block away from our east-west bus line and, um, and, and a short walk from the train station. I imagine that some of the people living there will be able to look out their windows and see the train pull up, or at least feel the rumble. That this is a, to have this project right here is, super in alignment with her sustainability plan. Um, the idea of giving $500,000 to a private property owner should definitely give everybody pause. And I, I've been there for a long time. In fact, when this went to the CPC, this request, I, I, I was like, oh boy, I, I, I just, I, I couldn't see my way how this was gonna happen. I want to thank the CPC for the thoughtful way that they've they they took this proposal on, and they've shown me a way, and I believe all of us the significance of why we need to do this. The um, the majority of the funds are coming from um, funding for historic preservation, mm -hmm. which um, is specifically de designated for historic preservation. And some of that fund, fund, some of those funds are coming from what I'll call undesignated CPA funds, which the CPC can use at their discretion. And they felt after they agonized over this, that this was the right thing to do. And, um, and I think it's important to, to consider that this, if you think of, we're just handing $500,000 to O'Connell Development Group, that's very short-sighted. That in fact, they're, they're, this obligation that they're taking on negatively impacts their property. They've submitted a report that says that impact is up to $630,000. Oh, wow. But more importantly for us, this investment by us, and I wanna underline it's an investment, obligates not just O'Connell, but all future property owners to maintain and preserve this structure. That this isn't just about this year, it's about next year and the year after and the year after that. That, um, that 50 years from now, that structure will still be there. It still may be residential housing. And a hundred years from now, it'll still be there. And it still may be residential housing, but you know what? It might be a restaurant. And you know what? It might also be affordable housing at that point because the rules have changed. It might be all of those things that we had that on that long list of things that we want to see. And um, and that um tonight um that this structure is hanging by a thread that um that uh in the CBAC, I have to say that. You know, there were there were times last year where I was like, CBAC's going to approve the demolition permit for this building. And the fact that it's still here to be talking about absolutely amazes me. Okay. Um, but it's hanging by a thread tonight. 
And I, I want to talk about two other structures to really drive this home. There are um, two buildings that we've lost are the Draper Hotel um, and the Erastus Hopkins House. The Draper used to sit on Main Street, uh, roughly, oh, well, some of it's still there, about a third of it is still there and that uh, two thirds of it are gone. They're where faces are and, um, and a bank. And it's a low one story building. It, but the, the majority of the, the Draper has been lost. Um, the Erastus Hopkins house sat over on, um, on Main Street at the Catholic Church. Um, and it was uh, torn down um, uh, to make room for a parking lot. And that um, in both of those cases, those are private property. That's what we're looking at tonight. You know, we've gotten really good at preserving um, any uh, properties that are of uh, are, that are publicly owned. Um, but when it comes to our private properties that are historic, which that is where the majority of our properties are, our historic properties, we don't have a really good record. But tonight we, we can change that. Um, that I, I ask P, I, I'm going to be uh, voting to approve uh, the $500,000 tonight. And I'm, I'm going to be voting to do that, not just for this year, but for all of the years to come. And I think if you look at it over time, that 100 years from now, folks are going to look back and they're going to say, oh, those citizens, those residents, in Northampton thought it was important to save this building as they're looking at that 80 foot tower. And I, I know it looks like a lot of money right now, but I think from the vantage of a hundred years from now, it won't look as, as big. And I think people re will really appreciate that we did this. Um, it's gonna be a hard vote for, for all of the counselors and, um, but I appreciate the time that you've allowed me to, um, share my thoughts here. Thank you, Councillor Maori. Thank you, Councillor. I, I will second what I believe I heard to be Councillor Nash's motion to put this uh, forward with a positive recommendation. Okay. Um, I also wanted to point out that we're uh, lucky to have Sarah LaValle here tonight. So if councillors have any questions, um, so should we vote to discuss, let's see. You, so you seconded the motion to positively recommend. Um, I believe I heard a motion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's fair to say I, I made a very long more oh, motion. okay. <laughs> so I have some questions for Sarah. I mean, we could vote and. Yeah, I think that that's fair, Councillor. That's what I thought too, that councillors were gonna be able to speak. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, or, or it's. Uh, or, I'm not going to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard not to intervene with Rachel's uh, not having her video on. Yeah. So. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Well. Um, so there's a motion on the floor. Correct. So we can. But we'll discuss. Uh, but Councillor Barge, you had a, a question, or you wanted to? Um, yeah, I do have a question, Councillor to um, Sarah LaValle and you know hearing and I want first of all I want to thank Councillor Nash you know everybody on your ward worked very tirelessly to save this church and you're absolutely correct the clock is ticking here and I have some concerns though on Sarah these are market price apartments, correct? These are not affordable housing, correct? Uh, that's what O'Connell had indicated. That's that's correct. Okay, and I thought I just heard Councillor Nash say something to the effect that someday if it's ever sold and whoever buys it again, they have to keep up the preservation on it, on the deed, what it states. But he also said, well, there could be affordable housing. Did I not hear that correct, Councillor Nash, on that? 
Yes, you did, Councillor. I'm. I said that what I was saying is that the long list of ideas that have been imagined over time may actually become possibilities. That the rules for affordable housing um, may actually change, and and maybe it maybe it's possible. I, I what I what I was saying was that if we don't preserve the church, all of those ideas will never have a chance of actually happening. Right. Thank you, Councillor Nash. You're welcome. Uh, my big thing is that the clock is ticking. It's there. We know that if it's not approved, period. Okay, they are going to go ahead. Are they actually going to go ahead and demolish it if they don't get that 500000 That's my question, Sarah. That's absolutely what O'Connell had indicated uh, during the CPC and Historical Commission discussion, okay. that th this amount of public funding was necessary to make the numbers work for them to enable them to save the church. Right. Did they actually come in to CPC and ask for 800 and something thousand? They did. Uh, and that, that request was later reduced to the 500,000 that's currently before council. So in other words, CPC told them, no, we cannot give you the 800,000. So they dropped it down. O'Connell, is that correct? They dropped it down to the 500,000? They, you know, they did some additional due diligence and uh, value engineering and decreased it during the funding round process. It, it wasn't specifically due to feedback from the Community Preservation Committee, uh, but more O'Connell trying to put forward something that they thought would be a little more tenable for the, the CPC and the council. Thank you very much, Sarah. That's it, Rachel. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, <laughs> I have some questions as well. Um, so did, did the CPC uh, propose just using preservation funds and not the general um, general CPC funds, the amount which is like 344 or that amount? They didn't. Um, that's generally not the CPC's practice when they review applications. You know, they they always discuss with applicants whether a reduced funding amount uh, would be something that would be possible. O'Connell in this instance indicated that it would not be, that they really needed this 500,000. That was the minimum necessary to make the project work. Um, and the, when the CPC puts together their recommendations, you know, they always draw from, the, from those set aside accounts first and then turn to the undesignated fund that's available for all project types if necessary. Right. That's the purpose of that fund? Correct. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, my other, my question, you know, my bigger question is really um, that I had at our last meeting was more about the process of the Central Business Architecture Committee. I don't. I guess I'm not understanding why, if this is, if this um, if the church is not you know uh, on its last leg, why it, it would ever be approved for demolition. I'm kind of horrified at the idea that you would that, that that's. I don't really understand why that's a possibility. Exactly. I don't staff the Central Business Architecture Committee, so I I don't have the full picture of. Uh, their discussions through this very long process, but they, they've continued that hearing request multiple times to allow for this funding discussion to take place. Well, I, I, to be honest, that, that, yeah, that doesn't feel great to me. It feels a little bit like Shoot. kind of putting someone over a barrel by saying, <laughs> we may or may not, you know, demolish this if you don't give us money. You know, I, I just think, we, we, we kind of needed that information and that process to understand um, because I, I definitely would like, I, I would love to see the church uh, standing and, you know, and continue to be in our community. But I'm not understanding this idea that um, it's, we give you a, a half a million dollars or, you know, we're gonna demolish this building that's not structurally unsound to the point, it might not be profitable in that, but we're, but we're not, it's not like a, it's not a physical hazard. You know, I can understand uh, issuing um, a demolition order for something that's, you know, unsound or uh, is not um, uh, safe. So uh, I guess, yeah. yeah I'd like I, I do know that O'Connell presented that uh, central business architecture application prior to even considering applying for CPA funds. 
Um, and then when they receive the message that that was something that you know is eligible for CPA funding and may be a possibility, that right. that started the continuation process. Okay. Yeah. That's. Um, yeah. I was hoping that we could understand more about that central. You know, the I guess the tenets of. I, I find it very problematic that that, that a, a building like that could could be considered for demolition. I so I, don't, I, I, I guess that's something I'm, I'll have to take up with um, whatever the mission, you know, either I'm sure the central business um, architect uh, committee members are just following the structure that's in, in front of them. But I'm, I'm, I'm questioning that kind of that mission statement and that structure now. <laughs> I mean, any application would need to meet the standards of the of the central business architecture ordinance, um, but central business architecture committee hasn't completed that evaluation since it's been continued several times. Yeah, I find that problematic, and I also wonder about the so the historic preservation status is tied to this money, but you can't uh, the community can't insist that a building be designated historic preservation site without the, you know, without the, the owner um, being on board, is that correct? I mean, there would be no mechanism to require the owner of a structure to place a historic preservation restriction on it, you know, absent CPA funding or a, a, a separate permit requirement or some other mechanism. Um, okay. There's, there's no mandate that would enable the city to in, enforce a placement of historic preservation restriction. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. I think I understand more. Um, yeah, I would, I mean, oh yes, go ahead, Councilor Moulton. Thank you. Um, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that the, uh, the Central Business Architecture Committee's decision on demolition was based not on on the uh, the the the, uh, the the condition of the structure but on whether it, there was a viable uh, economic uh, economically viable uh, alternative use for the building is isn't that correct uh, so the when central business architecture considers demolition they're not solely looking at the demolition of the structure but also what's proposed as a replacement and i I can get some additional information to summarize that for the full council meeting, but I, I don't have it available right now. And in fact, O'Connell's position is that without the $500,000, there would not be a, an economically viable project that they would move forward with for that building. It, not in the, the current state of the, the building that exists there. You know, so there's a viable use for the property, but they they economically wouldn't be able to make reuse of that structure feasible. Uh, uh, so yeah, Councilor Nash. Um. So I have a I have a suggestion that we recognize uh, Attorney Deb Henson. I think she can refer us to the the specific language. I I've just been trying to go through uh, the CBAC regulations right now while we're talking. But I think she could speak to. There's uh, three um, uh, points that need to be addressed in consideration for um, uh, demolition, and, and I think she could explain those to us. Uh, yeah, Deb I mean, Deborah. Is, I, uh, most of us received very uh, um, detailed information and, and materials from Deborah, which we're all thankful. It was I was just blown away by the quality and and depth. Uh, nature of the materials. I, um, Councilor Nash, I don't believe that we have to vote to recognize in the subcommittee uh, a community member. So unless there's any objections, um, we're, uh, Deborah Henson's uh, free to participate. Are there any objections? I don't see any. <laughs> yeah, if she could just, you know, if she could speak to, you know, the what uh, the yeah, dem demolition that. regulations uh, that CBAC has been struggling with. Let me just unmute her, excuse me. Not prepared. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's still muted? Hmm. Still muted. I'm having a tiny bit of lag. Okay. There, she goes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, free. <laughs> well, 
I was going to say, I don't want to bore you with the site. Uh, it's in all the materials. I know, you know, our group has it, but what I would say is the elements are if yeah. they're, and the CBAT committee has, has looked at it. And frankly, this is what energized our neighborhood was that this church almost got a grant of permission to demolish on April 6th of 2021. It's in the timeline that I, we put together. And it was shocking to me. I mean, shocking that that could happen to this beautiful structure. Jim and I were puzzled. I'm like, you know, Council and Nash, what you live here, what, what's going on? So there has to, and because I looked at the ordinance and it says it has to be shown by the person seeking the application to demolish that there's no viable use for the building. That's the first element, no viable use. Well, as you know, and I think what would make it difficult for them to grant it is that there is obviously a viable use, the city made an offer, but it's not that simple. And Carolyn Mish and I have talked about this for the last year and a half ad nauseum. There, the second element is that it has to be structurally and functionally obsolete. The third element is there has to be a suitable replacement building. But let's not even get to suitable replacement because we, of course, argued that, that what they proposed, five new luxury condos were not suitable. But let's not even get to that yet. Let's look at structurally and functionally obsolete. That is why, you know, we could quibble about the viable use. And Councillor Nash said all the different things that had happened before I ever moved here. I moved here in 2018 on Pomeroy Terrace. I love this church. I love this city because of the historic richness of this city, the density, as our expert said. He said, it's so dense here. You know, New England, yes, but Northampton is incredible. I love this city. And I've been working seemingly on old historic things ever since I landed with Ward 3 Neighborhood Association getting the cemetery fence up around the bridge street that had failed. But the three elements, students, I'm sorry to go on, but I'm passionate about this because I, like you, Councilor Mayori, I could not believe that the city as loving and as into history and having all these beautiful buildings and these great ordinances could even imagine, per, you know, permitting a developer to tear it down. It was beyond me. Viable use, how do they get around this? Structurally and functionally obsolete. That's why we hired, thanks to the donation of an anonymous person that apparently also couldn't believe it, who said, let's put some money toward this. We hired an expert to prove that it was not structurally obsolete, that it was structurally functional, the opposite of that. We did that with our team from, from yes, okay, I'm going on too long. I tend to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I will stop now. Anyway, they said, and Carolyn's are, and I argued about it has to be financially feasible, and that brings us back back to the point at, at, at hand. It has to be financially feasible. Carolyn says to me, I said it doesn't say that. She said it says structurally or functionally obsolete and functional. They are looking at functional, including this financial feasibility aspect that is the end of it but that is why we are here because it's not financially feasible go ahead thank you so much deborah i'm sorry <laughs> sorry no it's okay we we're kind of a loose structure um yeah it's a little bit of a loose I hope, structure i hope it helps it's it's a difficult subject but to, frankly yes. very difficult okay uh yes councillor nash i just want to say thank you to deb and i i think we want to keep it just uh, thank you for sharing that I, I i just don't want to get into uh 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 sharing public comment because we will not be able to meet our deadline of getting to the next meeting so thank you i found that incredibly helpful and, and it just shows uh your dedication that you understand that um, I actually referred to your material. I, th I saw that in your materials actually, but I just wanted to confirm it. Uh, your materials were, you know, the, the single handedly the most uh, useful uh, uh, thing I got, uh, you know, on the subject. Um, I, I have a question uh, for Sarah, uh, which is we, you know, I, I, we've talked about the, what O'Connell will be using the uh, the structure for if it's preserved 
but there is there any they have no legal requirement to um, stick to that plan do, do they of the rent market rate rental units they would not no so the uh, if awarded the funds by council these would go towards exterior preservation of the structure and the required historic preservation restriction um, would also ensure that it's maintained in the future and that any additional um, work to the exterior is historically appropriate, but it does not deal at all with the interior of the structure or, or its uh, ultimate use. Right. And so, you know, some of the math about will make the tax revenue back and, you know, I mean, it really, it all depends on what O'Connell decides to use the, the space for. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, I'll just, I will, yes, Councillor Nash. So it, I'd like to speak to the, the historic tra tax credits um, that O'Connell could take advantage of. That's only if they preserve the church, the interior as well in its current con condition. Once they get into altering the, the interior um, for, for, in this case, to make apartments, um, that the historic tax credits avenue, which could be lucrative, goes out the window. Um, if they actually entertain doing that and maybe want to turn it into a, a movie house or a, a performance space, I, I'd be fine with that. Um, but to to preserve the inside they, and to get they would they would need to preserve the in, inside to take advantage of those tax credits. Right. Thank and you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Nash, for explaining that because I was just going to mention about that historical um, tax. Right, and I would just add that you know, well, let's 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 ponder for a minute why that is. Why, why doesn't the state allow? Uh, historic tax credits to be used if you change the inside. I mean, it, it's because it's because it's not being used for a public good that they feel is strong enough. Is is that what I'm hearing? So, with a, a church building or something that you know that's a large building with a big space on the inside, the federal tax credit program has found in the past that dividing the structure um, and altering that in such a material way isn't eligible for historic tax credits. Um, you know, it's it doesn't mean it's the entirety of the project isn't historically appropriate, uh, but just to meet that particular funding hurdle, um, it would not be eligible. Okay, Sarah. So it's, you're saying it's not, um, you know, it's not a measure of public good. What the federal it's tax credit? No, no. It's, it's strictly due to, to yeah. the uh, the piecing up of the interior of the structure. Right. Um, I guess, you know, I'll just, I'll just state, okay, yes, Council of Barge. Thank you. I didn't know if you could see me or not, Rachel. <laughs> yes, I'm hoping, it, for some odd reason, at this time of day, I have internet issues, and I'm very much hoping at Council that I'll be able to, and if I, I wasn't, if, right, well, if I wasn't sharing, I would risk turning it on, because then, it, you know, it's not such a big deal, but right now, I don't want to lose. Um, uh, we have it out here, too, the yeah. same problem. Yeah, but working I, on I that have, one. Sarah, I have, um, I'm confused with this. When was, what was the date that this was approved with the um, CPA commission? Date was, give me a second. Um, the, the final date that it was recommended for funding by the Community Preservation Committee? Yes, yes please. Cool. August 24th. Thank you, Sarah. August 24th. Thank you, Councilor. Okay. I, it was approved the $500,000. And I'm going to say it again. Here is a transfer deed, property transfer deed in the Gazette September 15th of $3,475,000 from Holyoke from O'Connell selling their properties there, which looks like it's probably condos, all right? And Carolyn said that wouldn't make a difference because I felt when you're making that kind of money and you're looking for our taxpayers' money here in the city for CPA and being a private owner 
and that 300 and 475,000, why couldn't they take that 475,000 and put it toward the CPA money? And Carolyn said, no, it wouldn't make a difference at all. I'm just curious about that. Because that's a lot of money. So, Councilor Bar, are you asking why asking you why they wouldn't be able to apply some of their profits from another project right. to this project? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's all part of their operating pro forma and and business plan. You know, those the proceeds from that de, that the sale of that development, I can almost guarantee are already programmed okay. for some other use, most right. likely dealing with with that property or something else, but. Um, you know, we we didn't see O'Connell's entire books, but they did a detailed assessment of, of this project and made it clear that uh, this five hundred thousand dollars was necessary right. to make it work. Because I've had many calls from people in regards to that in the paper and saying, why are they asking for five hundred thousand when they've sold how many pieces of property in Holyoke? So thank you for explaining that. I appreciate that very much. Councilor Nash. Yeah, I. So when you when you have a successful business like this, um, that you know that the way it it I it is set up is that there's the properties all are investments on their own, and that um and that their their approach here is to you know take this property they 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 didn't invest here with this property to um to to lose money, they're in it to make money, and that, um, and and I acknowledge that's that's going on here for them, um, and that um, and and that is part of the 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 how we're trying to thread the needle on this one. That there, it is private property, but there will be a public benefit, which is the exterior of the building will always be as we see it now. And that's what we get out of it. And for O'Connell, that's actually that's a big deal. That means that what for you know, you know, if in twenty years they want to knock out a wall or something that and expand it, they can't do it. You know that they can't go and turn it into a, you know, a, add another story or two onto it. It it is what it is, and that um, and that I. I get that. Yeah, there, there is a, in one way you could look at it like we're being held hostage, um, but at the same time, you, I, I see this is also like O'Connell is saying, okay, you've made this hard for us. You've, you've disturbed our, our business plan, and is this really that important to you, Northampton? You know, and that Northampton, can you put some skin in the game? And that I think in this case, it's okay for us to put some skin in the game. That this is an important structure for us, just like the Draper was. We didn't have a shot at that. And we didn't have a shot at the Hopkins house, but we have a shot here. Councilor Nash, I have to say, I was born and raised in the city. I know about the Draper Hotel right down the line. And you're correct about that. Nobody had the opportunity for a chance to keep the buildings. That I agree with you on that. But when it comes to other buildings in the city, I know no, my city I, very, very well. And I know my people in this city. And when they call me as a counselor of concerns about seeing this type of money in the paper, I don't blame them for asking questions. And that's what they were doing. And and I don't blame them either, counselor. I, that's we've been asked hard questions here, and 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 I think that the hard part for us counselors when we if we vote yes is that we're going to have to answer those hard questions. Oh yeah, big time. Thank so, you, Councillor Nash. <laughs> <laughs> what I hope is my last question for for Sarah, and then you know we can uh, I can make a comment. But, that's what mine did this afternoon. We're losing Rachel. Was 
if if we don't approve the money and it and it goes back to the central you know that that process if we don't approve them are you able to hear me off and on hon <laughs> okay well yeah um I'm going to try a different location. Just give me one second. And Deborah, uh, I want to thank you very much for all the hard work you've done and also all the people in Ward 3 and throughout the city. This, this has been a challenge. It really has. As yeah. a city councilor for so many years, I've approved everything that's come through CPA. And this one was a hard one. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Barge. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, awesome. I'm sitting outside, but that's okay. It's kind of not raining. Uh, my, my last question was, if this funding is not approved and the Central Business Architecture uh, Committee process starts again, what, if they don't allow the demolition, then what happens? Is there any kind of restriction on I mean, it's the Central Business Architecture Committee. Don't they have uh, restrictions on changing facades? And that's what I'm wondering about. Um, I'm just trying to understand every consequence. You know, that's, exactly. that's your job. Uh, so they that would go back to Central Business Architecture Committee. They would continue their review of the proposed demolition and um, any proposed replacement structure. Um, you know, they, eventually they would have to come to a, a yes or no vote. Um, right, but if, even yeah, if they it's, it's hard to say. Uh, right, I guess I'm saying even if demolition's not the issue, even if they take take off the table, does the Central Business Architecture uh, Committee require, just like they would of any any facade? You know, they don't they have certain requirements for preserving facades? You know. Uh, they they do. Uh, the the church is within the central business side district, so it doesn't have the same level of review that a that a structure for main on Main Street, for example, would. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certainly um, you know uh, changes to the structure that that may be approved as part of the central business process that may not necessarily be historically appropriate, even if they don't approve demolition. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Aye, aye, aye. So I'm just going to name that I'm particularly anxious to get to council to unpack this further. There's, I have a lot of thoughts, but I, I, you know, I'm almost in the vein of I have serious reservations, yep. and so I'm not really, I'm not, um, I'm not looking to positively recommend this. But I, but I do want to further. I want to have a, a more of a conversation. But I'm kind of feeling like, uh, because it is a passionate issue, and uh, that that would that that energy we could maybe bring to full council in some form. Right. Right. Yes. I, I have to agree with Councillor Mirror. I, I, I a little hesitant about saying a positive recommendation right now. I want to hear from all the other councillors on this. I would feel comfortable with a neutral recommendation and send it to full city council. I, I concur, uh, Council LaBarge. Thank you. And now we have to, you know, I was thinking about this before the meeting. It's, um, you know, how many votes equal? <laughs> it, you know, I know that um, if you have a, mi you know, mixed votes, I mean, I guess we could just vote, but uh, because we do still have the motion on there and then decide what that means in terms of um, communicating that to full council. Yeah. But I do want to say, I do have, you know, I have, a, I, and I very much want to share my thoughts, um, you know, more detailed thoughts, but I, I do have to say that this is the toughest decision that's been before me, uh, mostly because. Um, because I, I completely respect and you know everything that Councilor Nash says. I'm like, yes, I, I understand that. And I've gotten to the bottom of the barrel in terms of information I needed. I, I think I, I, have, I have the gist of it. Um, but it's because it's at that place where I do feel reasonable people can disagree. And that's a, actually a tough place. Yeah, because I don't really disagree with anything um, that, um, that 
that's been put out there. I, I have so much respect for the tireless dedication of the, the, of the community group that's been working on this. Uh, but I still have some serious reservations that I would like to share with full council. Right. Uh, so I just wanted to state that, but in the interest of kind of time and energy, I'm just thinking, yeah, like I, you know, I could share those now, but I'm wondering if I should just wait and then share them with our other counselors. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. I guess there is a motion on the floor. Well, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Chair yeah. Maori, I, I too um, have, uh, I mean, this is a very, very hard decision and I too have uh, 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 things I'd like to say, but if you're gonna defer your comments to the full council, I will as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a little, you know, I will just name, you know, that's generally we do, we, we fully flesh everything out in the subcommittee. That's the whole, that's the point. But I, I think on this one, in the interest of time and um, really the energy, I. I um, and not being redundant because the meeting is right before the other meeting and it will all be fresh in our heads. Exactly. Um, that, that, that's what I would prefer. Uh, I, I didn't start out that way except with my internet connection. Now I'm feeling like I'm gonna defer um, some of those, you know, more, um, yeah, some of the further comments. So um, I guess with, with a motion on the floor, we need to do something about that. But I don't feel I have any more questions or comments that I want to make at this time. I don't either. I will do more at city council. Yeah. As will I. So I, I move the question. Okay. Well, it, you know, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. And, um, but I, I, I will say, you know, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm I'm disappointed we we aren't making a clear recommendation here. Um, I, I think that financially this this is a, it, it's a big number, but I think it's the right thing for the city to do. Um, and that um, yeah, I, I I I'm confident that I I can answer any question around this based on the work I've done over the last ten years and the work I've done with um, you know lots of different folks here and um, that um, that you know the CPC led us here the historic commission led us here and um, so anyway I, I will with, withdraw my uh, motion to make a positive recommendation and um, and I'll uh, make a motion for a neutral recommendation to council I'll uh, withdraw my second on the positive and second the neutral Roll call, please. Laura, are you around? <laughs> She's working on it. Sorry, forgot I was muted. Councillor Mayori? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Moulton? Yes. And Councillor Nash? Yes. Okay, so the passes with a neutral recommendation to council at seven. And I do I do honor what you're saying, Council Nash. I, I, I really feel it's finance's role to take a leadership position, particularly on finance orders. I'm feeling this is a, a very emotional and complex issue and that we just have to, if we didn't have a, a time crunch tonight, I would, I would, I would stay here and, and um, in, in the subcommittee. I understand. So that's yeah. that's the only thing that's kind of um, driving me because I, I actually really thought about that, that, you know, this is really our role. And I, I don't like to, I d frankly don't really love um, neutral recommendations because our whole, you know, role is to give guidance to council. But I, I'm feeling like, um, yeah, I'm just feeling this, the time crunch. So um, I think that that's all we have then on our agenda for now and um, move to adjourn. Yes, okay, roll call please, Laura. Okay, um, I didn't hear the second, but I am assuming there I was said, one. Oh, I'm sorry, Thank yeah, you. Mary Ann, excuse okay. me, Councilor Labarge, a second. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. And Councilor Mayori. Yes. Thank you and thank you to all who joined us. So I'll see you very soon. <laughs>